Tonight, you might have your own story of your need to know who Christ is and know how to respond to Him in faith as our friends have on these video clips. Their stories are a result of them responding to Christ. And I hope that tonight, as a result of the passage we're going to look at, the story we're going to look at, that you'll know how to respond as well. I'd like to invite you to open up your bulletin to an outline that has tonight's passage. If your child is with you, you might look on with them and help them fill in the blanks of the the, uh, message as we move along. Reading from Matthew chapter 2, the story about the wise men. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah. But for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time when the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star... They were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warmed and dreamed not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. The story of the wise man, which is a familiar story we all know, tells us something on how we respond on Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve, first we find the king. The Magi were motivated to find the king. They had to overcome a long distance to find the king. Some people think it took them as long as a year to find Bethlehem, to find the child. They had to follow a star. Astronomers tell us that probably during that time there's, a, there's a different opinions about what that star was, how bright it was, the significance of it. Some people think it was a comet. Other people think it was the convergence of two planets, of Jupiter, which was known as the, the king star, and Saturn, which was known as the Sabbath star. So to them, putting those together and the prophecies, they believe this was the star of the king of the Jews. They searched after this star. And they traveled a long distance. But probably the greatest barrier between them and finding this Christ child was the profession itself. We don't use the word magi now, but we believe that magi was some cross between astronomers who know the path of the stars and astrologers who know the meaning of the stars. Well, either way, whether they're astronomers or astrologers, according to Hebrew scriptures, they never would have been included within the people of God, because they were magicians, astrologers, people who trusted the stars rather than trusting God. These wise men demonstrate for us not only their long journey to find the king, but also the wide grace of God. That the king who was born to the Jews would be the king for all people. And they were were the people that you'd say, of all people, they found him? And on Christmas Eve, it's a time for us to reflect on the wide grace of God. There are some of us in this room who cannot believe that we have come as far as we can have to find Jesus as the King. We look at the obstacles of our life of circumstances or an irreligious family or, or a, a, a detour that took us off into some other path for a period of time. And on Christmas Eve tonight, we realize the wide grace of God has allowed us to come into contact with the King. Awesome. And some of us come to Christmas Eve and say, I am so far from God, there's no way that I could actually see him as the king. The wise men tell us that the grace of God brings us who are far away close to him. The song tells us, the carol tells us, this, this is Christ the king, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. 
So we find the king. In spite of the roadblocks, in spite of the obstacles or the distance, we find him tonight. This is Christ the king. We also find out from the story on Christmas Eve, we worship the king. The wise men set out to worship the king. That was their intent. And when they got there, they were not disappointed. And the scripture tells us that they, they were overjoyed. And that word overjoy literally means they were overjoyed with joy. They were jazzed. They were psyched. They were thrilled. They were, they were blown away. They were pretty psyched. They were excited. And their response is worship. Now, when we see the word worship, we always think of worship services that are 845, 1030, and 545. We think of services times. But worship literally means to fall on our face. You know the, the song, O Holy Night, fall on your knees? That's the posture of worship. That's literally what it means, to fall on our knees, to give praise and glory and honor to the one that we're in front of. And that word is used both in honoring a king, as you would coming into a throne room. What would you do? You'd fall on your face to give him honor. And it's the same word as used to worship God. And so here are the wise men coming before the child, and they fall on their face. They bow before him to worship him as the king. But you know, worship wasn't the only response. King Herod had a different response. King Herod was threatened by the birth of a king. He was, he was sort of coy. He was tricky. He told the wise men, you go find him first and then, then come tell me where he is so that I might come and worship him as well. Actually, he wanted to obliterate this king. And so in the next few paragraphs of, of Matthew's gospel, we find out that Herod sends uh, his men to go kill all the children who would have been about Jesus' age. That wasn't the first time that Herod eliminated his uh, opponents. He got rid of his wife, mother-in-law, two sons. That's a great Christmas story, huh? But the wise men show us the appropriate response on Christmas Eve is to worship the king. Why would we worship him? Well, Jesus is the king. And as king, he has come not to rule over a nation, but to rule over our hearts. He came to initiate the kingdom of God and to rule our hearts. Well, what is it that's so special about this king that would make us fall on our face and worship him. The prophets tell us in this passage that the king who was to come was to be a shepherd for God's people. Well, Jesus tells us stories about sheep and their shepherd. What do we know about sheep and their shepherd? We know that the shepherd loves his sheep and the good shepherd will lay down his life for his sheep. Jesus laid down his life for us. We also know that a good shepherd knows his sheep's name. Do you know that Jesus knows us intimately? He knows who we are. He knows us by name. He knows every hair on our head. He knows what's in our hearts. He knows us. We also know that the Good Shepherd looks for those who are lost. There are many of us who are looking to find the King, but you know what? He's looking for us. The Shepherd is looking for that one lost sheep. He's willing to leave the 99 to find the one. And he saves that one in order to leave that sheep to life. Because Jesus tells us there are those who are imposters, who come to, to, to rob and steal and destroy. But Jesus says, I have come that you might have life. He wants to lead us to those places of pasture where we can be fed and we can experience life the way we were designed to. When we find out who Jesus is, when we come face to face with him as our shepherd king, our only response is to fall on our face and to worship him and give him the glory and honor and praise and love and devotion that he deserves. On Christmas Eve, we worship the king. And lastly, tonight on Christmas Eve, the wise men tell us that our response is to gift the king. We gift the king. The wise men came with gifts. You know, a great trivia question for Christmas is, how many wise men were there? How many magi were there? How many of you believe there were three wise men? How many of you believe there were ten or more? We, so we don't know, right? The answer is, I don't know. We don't know. You know, a good question, a good uh, joke for Christmas would be, how many uh, wise men does it take to bring three gifts? You know, screw a light bulb. That's a joke. Okay. Um, it's not a funny joke, just a joke. 
Um, they brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. You know, um, Christmas is a time that we give gifts to each other. Santa Claus is actually a great reminder to us, if it doesn't get out of control, a uh, great reminder to us to give good gifts to people. Gift giving is a good thing, and when we look at our lists of people we're going to buy gifts for, we don't buy just any random gift for the people on our list. We, we buy gifts that are appropriate for the person on our list. The wise men brought gifts that were appropriate. And you know, there's meanings to each one of those gifts, but the most important thing is that they were valuable gifts. All of them were fit for a king. The gold, frankincense, and myrrh were all valuable. And this Christmas Eve, the wise men teach us that we gift the king with the thing that is most valuable to us. And you know, when I think about what's most valuable to us, uh, I, I'm, I'm happy to tell you that you've brought it with you. You didn't have to go shopping today to find it. You didn't have to bring anything special. I didn't have to send you a special email to tell you what to bring. You've already brought it with you. It's right here in this room. Each of you have one. You've all brought it. The thing that the wise men teach us to give on Christmas Eve is our hearts. It's the most valuable thing we have. The last song that we sang tells us that. Here's what it says. What thing can I give him empty as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. What then can I give him? I must give my heart. Why is it that the thing most appropriate to give to the king is my heart? It's the most valuable thing that I have because scripture tells us that our hearts are the wellspring of life. That in our hearts are all the great things of life, of courage and celebration, of passion and compassion, of integrity, of loyalty. All of those things that are in our hearts are the best things in, in life. And what Jesus wants us to do is tonight to give him our hearts, whether we've, been, whether we've known him our whole lives or that we've never known him. Tonight to give him our hearts, because you know what he wants to do? He wants to take our hearts and by the power of his Holy Spirit at work in us, he wants to transform our hearts so that what comes out of our hearts are the things that he gives. His life, his courage, his hope, his passion, his compassion. You see, we live in difficult times. And the world is looking at Christians, people of faith, and wondering, does peace on earth have anything to do with Christ? And it's our responsibility to decide that we're going to make a difference. We're not just going to go through the motions of believing in God. We're going to actually do something about it. We're going to allow God to take our hearts and change them so that what comes out actually changes the world. So there actually would be peace on earth. It's not going to happen outside of us. It's going to happen because God works through us. Each one of us. I have this, um, this picture of each one of us tonight finding the king, worshiping the king, and then gifting the king with our hearts. You know, the interesting thing, at the very end of this passage, the very last uh, verse says that the wise men uh, left the child and took a different route home, right? And we all know that means they took a different street. Okay, this street leads to Herod. We're going to go this way. But what's kind of interesting is the word route actually is the word way. When Jesus talks about the wide way and the narrow way, and it's not just a road, but a way of life. See, I wonder if the wise men, after coming face to face with the king, didn't leave as different people. That they went home a different way. That they lived their lives differently because they were in the presence of the king of kings and lord of lords. Tonight, my prayer for us is that we would go home a different way. That this Christmas Eve, we wouldn't just hear the message again and go home the same. We would hear the message and respond by giving our hearts and go home 
a different way. You know what's so great about that message? Is that you can respond to that whether you're three years old or you're 93. You heard the stories of our friends on the video, and what they reminded me of is that all of us come with a story. All of us come with a, a hurt, a need, a, a, a desire, a hope. And what I found in listening to these stories and knowing those people and knowing the people within our congregation and friends is that Jesus responds to that need and that hope like no one else. And so I'd like us to pray as we close tonight. And I'd like us to consider giving our hearts to the King of Kings and allowing Him to change our hearts. And I guarantee that God will do something for us, that he'll make a difference in our lives, that we will go home a different way. Let's pray together. God, our Father in heaven, when we consider the child born in a manger, we're blown away that this is not just an ordinary child. This child was born to die for us. This child was born to rule our hearts. This child was born to save us. As we come face to face with him tonight, we fall on our knees. We give you thanks and praise and honor for being the King of kings and Lord of lords. And we give you our hearts tonight. I give you my heart as a 46-year-old man who's known you most of my life, I give you my heart again tonight and ask you to take my heart and change my heart. And then use me, use us, to make a difference in our world. The people around us wouldn't just see us as people of faith, but they'd see us as people who are striving to make a difference because we know the King of Kings. Hear our prayer, God, as we give ourselves to you. We pray for our world and would ask that there would be peace on earth. We think of all the conflicts around our world. We think of wars and we think of struggles, even in our own families. We lift them all up to you and ask that you would bring your peace and your hope, your joy and your love. Change us, God, so that we might change the world. Not for ourselves but for you. In Jesus' name, amen.